Hi everyone, now it's time to start Gen Talk 5, mixing it up, applying a mixed methods approach to your research. First, let's define mixed methods. So what are mixed methods? Really, mixed methods approaches allow you to utilize the best of both worlds. Mixed methods research offers you the best of both worlds because it entails the in-depth, contextualized, and natural, but more time-consuming insights of qualitative research, coupled with the more efficient, but less rich power of quantitative research. Mixed methods allows the researcher to collect, analyze, and therefore mix quantitative and qualitative research methods to address the problem proposed in a single research investigation or study. Applying a mixed methods approach is more comprehensive than attacking a, pro a problem from just one point of view. Who should use a mixed methods approach? Really, anyone who wants to tackle a research problem from two or more perspectives will benefit from a mixed methods approach. It could also be the case that you've been working on a project and building your ideas and not sure if you want to do qualitative or quantitative because you can see the benefits to both. Well, you're one of those people that would like that multiple perspective approach and mixed methods may work well for you. Mixed methods research has been employed with real success in all social science and human service disciplines, including counseling and therapy, occupational and physical therapy, psychology, sociology, education, and the health sciences and healthcare. So let's consider an example relevant to our program, to our class, and something that I'd actually like to do as a mixed re methods research study. What if you wanted to explore college faculty resistance to creating fully accessible digital course content? If you're already a large university like I am, you can probably imagine accessing hundreds of faculty, maybe by way of a survey, especially if you can catch them somewhere that they all are expected to be, like at a faculty retreat. And if you make the survey something that's not too time consuming, so you can convince faculty that it's worth their while. But what if you also wish to ask follow-up questions? Or maybe you want to ask interview questions beforehand so that you can create smart survey questions. And you may also want to talk to their support staff regarding their reluctance to engage in making all course content accessible. Which methodological design should you employ? A mixed methods approach really could be perfect in this case. So let's talk about applying the mixed methods. How might we design the study? We could engage in quantitative data gathering via a survey. Then we may follow up with a focus group participation with some faculty. It could include collecting quantitative and qualitative data. The focus groups usually are a little bit more qualitative. Additionally, you can engage in several open-ended interviews with faculty members or to better understand their feelings and beliefs and reactions, their, their support staff, so that you can understand their feelings and reactions to creating accessible course content. You may also want to interview the support staff to see what goes on in the training and where the resistance lies. Lastly, you will choose the sequence of these data collection methods so one may help inform the other instruments as you're progressing through the study. There are three basic types of mixed methods design. So as you're writing your proposal, if you say that you're doing a mixed methods design, you would also, also outline specifically which design approach you choose. Is it the convergent parallel design, the explanatory sequential design, or the exploratory sequential design? Just in looking at the titles, it should tell you a little bit about how they're going to happen. The parallel design means things are going on at once. That's your data collection. And the sequential designs both imply that different sequences are happening for the quantitative and the qualitative. Let's first talk about the convergent parallel design. With the convergent parallel design, both your quantitative and your qualitative data are collected at the same time with separate samples or groups. So you'd analyze two or more data sets separately. You'd merge the results during the interpretation phase and report on the analysis. So based on our example, you'd engage in those all faculty surveys first. You would also engage in the focus groups with faculty while you're also engaging in the surveys across campus. And you would engage in your interviews with faculty and the support staff at this, during the same period of time. Which doesn't mean you're doing all three of these things at once. It means that from January through March, 
without one influencing the other in terms of changing instruments, you're doing your surveys, you're scheduling and doing your focus groups, and you're engaging in your interviews with faculty and with support staff participants. Instruments then are all created in advance. Instruments are your surveys, your protocols, the questions that you're going to ask, all created in advance during this proposal phase that you're all engaging in now, and they're not altered from the period in which you start collecting data, even if you learn something from the surveys or the focus groups or the interviews, you still wouldn't change the other data collection pieces. Now let's talk about explanatory sequential. As you know from your methods overview document that I created for you, explanatory research is typically quantitative. Therefore, in an explanatory sequential design, you will start with your quantitative data collection first. First, you engage in quantitative data collection, so your surveys, analyze and review that data, and then modify, modify your qualitative instruments accordingly. Then you do the qualitative data collection phase of the study. Then you'd interpret the results, um, keeping in mind that the quantitative data results have possibly already impacted the qualitative data that you engaged in second. All of this based on step two above. Then you report your results. So based on our applied example, you'd implement the all faculty survey first. You'd analyze the results of that and use that data to refine your focus group questions and your interview questions. Then you'd engage in the qualitative piece of your focus groups and your interviews with faculty and staff. Upon completion of the qualitative data collection phase or the focus groups and the interviews, you'd analyze your qualitative results and then merge your results from both methods in your final report. Now let's talk about the exploratory sequential model. As you know from your methods overview, exploratory research is usually qualitative. Therefore, in the exploratory sequential design model, you will start with your qualitative data collection phase first. Engage in qualitative data collection first. Analyze the results of your qualitative data collection and modify your quantitative instruments based on information you learned from the qualitative piece. Then you engage in quantitative data collection and then interpret the results, keeping in mind that the qualitative piece has already had an opportunity to influence the quantitative based on step two above, and then report your results. So how does this apply to our example? You engage in the focus groups and the interviews with faculty and staff first. When you're done, you take a look at that data and refine the survey. Maybe you realize that you didn't ask some questions that you need to. Maybe some questions need to have the wording changed because you realize faculty and staff would read or understand it differently, so you modify the language. Maybe you eliminate some questions because you realize they're not relevant or not really getting at what you wanted to get at. Then you implement that quantitative piece or your all faculty survey. And then upon completion of the quantitative data collection phase, you analyze your quantitative results and then merge your results from both research methods in your reports. Mixing it up. As you can see, mixing it up can allow you to study something from varying perspectives and to take advantage of the benefit of both quantitative and qualitative methods and various quantitative and qualitative data collection techniques. It truly can be the best of both worlds.